Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, Shinrin Yoko, and Yurt Life, bringing you a grand solar minimum. Update Friday, October 20th, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. A major, the first major winter storm to move across the U.S. begins Tuesday morning and ends by the weekend. Keep calm. It's boom time. Scattered strong to severe thunderstorms are possible across portions of the southeast and mid-Atlantic Friday evening. Strong to locally severe wind gusts and hail will be possible with any storm development. And a dominating high-pressure system across the southern plains will continue to produce record high temperatures Saturday as we wait for a historic winter storm which is coming to the U.S. and nobody's bumming. Here is Tuesday morning into Wednesday. That storm is going to move down into the Pacific Northwest at the high elevations and basically cover all of Montana. By Wednesday, it should be making its way into Utah, into Oregon, and into Wyoming through Thursday. Thursday morning into Friday, it's going to move down to the Four Corners region. We're talking Utah, Nevada, Colorado, as it moves east, north, South Dakota, and Minnesota. Say it ain't soda, but this system is looking quite epic as we've been predicting this snowstorm now for over a week, and the models are, well, they're lining up. It is coming to fruition. Stay tuned for more updates on heavy snow coming to the high elevations, the Rockies, and the Northern Plains. Hurricane Norma still brewing in the eastern Pacific. It's looking like uh, it's going to make landfall at on Baja as a major hurricane sometime 12 p.m. Saturday and then make its way onto land into Mexico by Monday. So keep a close eye on that. As hurric the hurricane season is not over, we've got Hurricane Norma in the eastern Pacific. Let's take a quick look uh, at the key message. Norma is expected to bring hurricane conditions and dangerous storm surge to portions of the far southern Baja California Peninsula with the hurricane warning area on Saturday. Preparations to protect life and property should be rushed to completion. Heavy rains from Norma will begin to impact far southern portions of Baja today and continue through Sunday with heavy rains reaching Sinaloa on Saturday. This rainfall will produce flash and urban flooding along with possible mudslides, so take heed of the warnings. And then we've got Hurricane Tammy in the Atlantic. It's going to be a hurricane as it makes its way and rafes its way across the Leeward Islands Saturday, Sunday, and into Monday. And then make a hook here, hopefully eliminating uh, a path towards Bermuda. We can take a quick look at the key message here for Hurricane Tammy. Hurricane conditions are expected in portions of the Leeward Islands by late tonight through Saturday. Tropical storm conditions are expected to begin in portions of the Lesser Antilles with the warning area this evening or overnight. Heavy rains from Tammy will begin to affect the Leeward and Northern Windward Islands tonight and Saturday, spreading into the British and U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico as early as Sunday which will be their fun day. This rainfall may produce isolated flash and urban flooding, along with isolated mudslides in areas of higher terrain. So heed the warnings for Tammy if you're in those regions. Now, we've been reporting on the major storm hitting uh, the UK over the last few days. Now, two storm deaths in Scotland as new red warnings are issued. The second person has died is Storm Babette, brought high winds, torrential rain, and severe flooding to parts of Scotland. The Met Office has now issued a new red danger to life weather warning for some areas. There we see that warning from Stonehaven, south to Montrose, and inland to Forfar. And here we can see some of the flooding overwhelming the areas early in the morning there. We can see rescuers probably getting people out. That is the Coast Guard rescue right there. A bridge in Glencova, Angus, we reported on this over at the Twitter yesterday, uh, has been completely destroyed and is now missing. And this was earlier as that storm surge was rising. So we've got uh, concerning conditions probably tapering off tonight in the UK, hey, hey, and Scotland. So heed the warnings. As Canada's earliest minus 30C since 2017 just happened, Cold snap forces Germany to fire up a reserve coal plant. And well, that's because these renewable resources can't 
keep up. And here we can see the North American snow mass starting well above normal this year and fall northern hemisphere snow extent ever increasing as the global warmests continue to be diluted by the mainstream media. Seismic update, no quakes of note. A moderate uptick in activity worldwide, but nothing of any magnitude of any significance. 5.0 in Japan at six kilometers and normal activity worldwide. As we take a look at the worldwide volcano news, nothing significant today. We've got normal activity, Ibu to 7,000 feet, Sun Gay to 22, Santa Guito puffing and passing. Many others, we've got Popo to 23,000, Fuego to 15, Semaru to 14,000 feet, Kluchaskov puffing and passing today, Sokorajima to 6,000 feet. Uh, and we do have a new Liwotolo there, 7,000 foot puff today. And Bezamiani still puffing and passing, but has that paroxysm has seemed to come to an end as Slamet Volcano in central Java, Indonesia has elevated seismic activity persisting and the alert level has been raised to two. You can see a little puff there from Slamet. Space weather news update. The sun has gone quiet. It's solar max. One of the weakest solar cycles in over 100 years. Almost no sunspots. There's one right there. The rest are just pinpricks. X-ray activity remains extremely low, B5.2. And the three-day geomagnetic forecast still waiting potentially for that CME to arrive, but it appears as if very little activity there. There seems to be another arise here again in density, but the speed has yet, yet to budge. It does look like as if it is going up now. And we did see that the aurora looked to be pretty significant now, yes. So we could be receiving this glancing blow from the coronal mass ejection right now. So get out and look up if you're up in Canada tonight. We could have some good auroras as telemetry is all pointing up to the sky. The great cash for carbon hustle. Offsetting has been hailed as a fix for runaway emissions and global warming or climate change. The only problem is CO2 is plant food and it doesn't affect the temperature, but I do digress. But the Marcus' largest firm selling millions of credits for carbon reduction aren't even real. Yes, folks, it's a scam. And this article from The New Yorker exposes the scam in plain sight. The great cash for carbon hustle isn't even real. Astronomers spot a record-breaking radio signal that took 8 billion years to reach Earth. Absolutely mind-blowing. 8 billion years ago, something happened in a distant galaxy that sent an incredibly powerful blast of radio waves hurtling through the universe. It finally arrived at Earth on June 10th last year. And though it lasted less than a thousandth of a second, a radio telescope in Australia managed to pick up the signal. This flash from the cosmos was an FRB or a fast radio burst, a little understood phenomenon first discovered in 2007. Astronomers revealed on Thursday that this particular fast radio burst was more powerful and came from much further away than any previously recorded. Having traveled 8 billion light years from when the universe was less than half of its current age. Many people have suggested these FRBs or fast radio bursts are evidence of advanced extraterrestrial civilizations. But I think it may be something different. And the fact that we know nothing about our universe could have something to do with it. Let's talk about the Devil Comet, for instance. This is more local, less than 8 billion light years away. In fact, it's in our solar system and it's headed our way. But that's okay. The only problem is the way they describe it and the way they talk about these comets is complete fairy tales. We do have a new model of comets that's been around for a very long time, at least 250 years, and that's the history of the electric comet theory. Lee and I are going to be discussing it tomorrow, as well as the Minoan eruption over at Revolution Radio every Saturday noon Mountain Time in Studio B right here. Just hit the play button. Lee and I discuss cosmic catastrophes on our radio show from noon to 1 p.m. So join us there or watch the replay over on Magnetic Reversal News, 8 p.m. tomorrow evening.
And if you want to know about the false U.S. inflation rate they've been hawking on the lamestream media, here is the reality. The U.S. aggregated inflation is over 23%, and in the last 48 hours, it has spiked an additional percent. The prices of consumer products have almost doubled, and they're lying to you in plain sight. It's not getting better, folks. It's only going to get worse. People are going to get poorer. People are going to become homeless. I hope you've been preparing for almost a decade now since we started the channel. We've been imploring you to do so. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. Hit that thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm. And be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. New, new.